So when we last left off, we're still talking to Iris, who is Brenda Condon's sister. She's fill, still filling me in with uh, information about the bar, the bar's owner, Crazy Carl, the boyfriend, Greg, uh, the particulars about Brenda, uh, fight or flight, uh, you know, was she promiscuous, what was her drug use, things like that that is very important in understanding the victim, number one, but the process of a crime, if one is committed here. We haven't determined that yet. Uh, you know, and that was one of the things that I had to ask her. Would Brenda be the type of person who just pack up and leave? Well, you know, nobody really knows. They could give you any answer that they want, but you never know. But with her leaving the car there, leaving the kids... You know, I'm certainly biased, I think, one way, but I'm willing to let it play out and let's see what the evidence says. So let's finish up our victimology with Brenda Condon's sister, Iris. Um, well, didn't Todd also say that he recognized one of those guys from Greg Sunoco? I don't know. I thought I read that in the, I know I read it in the newspaper. It was probably in the year anniversary one. He said, I've definitely seen, I think it was the younger guy before at, because he used to work at Greg's. So no. Todd? Yes. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, that's what it said. And I did what you just did was like, wait a second. He's 13. <laughs> Todd wasn't old enough to be working at the gas station. Maybe I'm just assuming that he was working there, that he said he pumped gas there. Well, he he might have just for something to do while his mother was talking to Greg. Right. But as far as Todd working at that gas station, no. Okay. Well, I'm going to head up and I'm going to be uh, talking to him tomorrow anyhow. So I guess that would be a better question okay. for him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so when when Carl's telling me that Brenda sent home the doorman early that night, did you ever hear that before? No, that is something new to me because I can't imagine. There wasn't that many people there on a Monday night. There was no bands. Right. So why would they need a doorman? I can see Friday and Saturday nights they had a doorman. Right. Because she told me about that. But I I don't understand a Monday night because bars are slow on Monday nights. Well, how about more than one bartender? Was that something that she ever talked to you about? Like no. Other than the Saturday night before, there was... I think there was a guy on with her, but I think he was training her so that she could go in on Monday night by herself. Right. And uh, this is a million dollar question, and I know you're going to tell me you don't know, but I'm going to ask anyhow, do you know the name of that guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea. That's okay. I can try to track it down somehow, but it's very important if he was the one training her. Um, so. And she and Bonnie went there quite often, is my understanding, because that's where Greg hung out when he wasn't in the ba playing in the band. Okay. Did you know, I mean, when Greg introduced you to Carl, did they mm -hmm. seem like they were good friends, just acquaintances? Yes. chummy, chummy friends, yes. Okay. Okay, good to know. Um, did she share with you that she had any inclination of leaving Greg? No, she didn't. Okay. Um, what are the the... I guess the chance that 
she just said, you know what, I'm out of here. And she left with somebody she met that night at the bar. What would be no, the zero no, percent? I don't think so. Uh -uh. That, that's not in her. No. Okay. No, no, that it was not. Like I said, she called me on the phone all the time. She showed up my house all the time. Um, you know, and I'm talking about every couple of days or so. Um, she would stop in or, you know, call me or something. Um, no. For her to just pack up and leave now because and to leave her car i mean that car meant to her as much to her as her kids did that's good to know thank you for telling me that that's important um did you ever talk to carl other than that friday night no no i stayed away from him i i didn't like the feeling that i had and it's like i i don't need to interact with him in any way because he's not going to tell me anything was brenda was she like easily influenced was she gullible no no she was street smart oh yeah okay well let me let me run a scenario by you and you just tell me what you think about it if let's see she had to open up that next morning correct correct and that is at 6 a.m Oh, I don't think so. No? I no. She had to open up the next day, but I think it was like nine o'clock. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I I'm not sure, but I got six o'clock from somebody somewhere. So I, I don't know. That why does seem early, are, right? If if they're not serving food, why she'd have to open up at six AM? Even the clubs don't open up at six AM. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I don't the cigarette guy was there, I don't know, sometime in the morning. Maybe 10 o'clock in the morning she was supposed to open up. Okay, that makes more sense to me. Like 10 to 5. Okay. Because the other guy was supposed to, I think, come in at 5 because she and Greg were to go out to dinner that night. Did she have any problems with, you know, getting home at 2.30 in the morning and then getting right back up and going to work? No, no. Okay. No, that's that's in all of us, our brothers and even myself included. Two, three o'clock in the morning, get a couple hours sleep and right back up again at five or six and go. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's our whole family was like that, so Okay. Um so let's talk about those boots and everybody, you know, I guess in the newspaper at least, in the police that I've research said that she didn't have an extra pair of shoes there but how does anybody know that <laughs> that you don't you don't know and she wore these she, these boots with high heels on yeah so that's why i said to find them in the men's restroom i just i just don't believe that that's where she put them okay would you think well, I guess you wouldn't know this. And this is why it's important to find somebody that worked there. Um, mm -hmm. Did she have to mop? Or was that part of the closing duties? That's usually, yeah. Yeah. Would she take those boots off to mop? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Okay. Um, did the police share with you any of their theories? No. 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 I couldn't get anything much out of them except for Shaw, who would say, well, you know, we brought the dogs in and searched, but didn't find anything. They followed a car or a, a vehicle that was in, oh, it was in the parking lot or it was parked at the neighbors or something. I, I forget what it was, but it didn't pan out to be anything. Okay. Do you, do you know how well they searched? No, I don't think they searched very well because it was done very quickly from my understanding, from what Shaw told me. Um, and they only did it one time. And they would not call Rockview State Police in to help them. 
Yeah, and the the only thing that I came across that was any sign of a disturbance, they said that part of the a rug was tipped up or whatever. Okay, I don't know anything about that. I just know that the rug guy, uh, the carpet guy, came in there the next day to replace the carpets, um, or their their mats or whatever, yes. and the cigarette guy and. That's when they said there were still partial drinks left on the bar and there was money left on the bar, you know, and why would you leave chip money on the bar? And oh, that was the thing I asked Carl, where was the tip jar? Because everybody has a chip, a, a tip jar or a cup or something that that money would have gone into behind the bar, usually by the register. Mm -hmm. But there Nobody knows anything about that. They just know about the money that was left laying on the bar. Well, I thought that, that, and maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that got explained away because the police said that there were people there drinking that morning yeah. and they were putting money on the bar and paying for their drinks because the, the bar was unlocked. Oh, so they changed that. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's what yeah. I read. So, I, I, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, they said that the, you know, the, the money was left laying on the bar. So. Well, and I asked, knows. I asked Carl about the procedure, you know, when you tally up the register, where does that right. money go? And he said mm -hmm. they would keep it in the drawer, like the, you know, it re the removable drawer and right. put it in his office. And I asked him if that was done, and he said no, the money was still in the register. So uh, if that's okay. the case, it seems to me obviously that, yeah, somebody took her before she could do that. Right, yeah. See, and that's why he he refused to show me the bank deposit slip. So. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't done, then, yeah, that makes sense. Because there was no bank deposit slip. Right, right. She probably didn't get it there that far. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm out of things to uh, ask you, Iris, but I am an open book if you want to ask me anything. Um, when are you going to do your podcast? <laughs> um, it's going to be like a like a weekly thing I you know as soon as okay. I do something I think and then I have to edit it and put it out mm -hmm. so it takes a little bit um, mm -hmm. but that first episode is everything I really talk to you about okay and I'm probably gonna put that out later on this week later on this week yeah okay. and will you send, send me a email yes or something absolutely when you well. or a text message or something and let me know so yes and okay. then I'll have to edit our talk here and I'll put mm -hmm. that out. And when I go up and talk to Todd and I'm going to go to, I went to Carlsbad today. It's actually mm -hmm. Robin Hood Brewery now, but I went oh, out. It was a pizza shop. Yeah, for a while. it was. A pizza, brewery. Yeah. Okay. So I went there and walked behind the building and was looking in the fields and I took a drive. There's a, there's a little desolate road up there uh, right across from those fields if I abducted somebody and I wanted it because when you abduct somebody the first thing you want to do is get to a salute, secluded location so you can do your dastardly deed sometimes after I get done talking to people they lay down at night and they got a million questions and they think of things mm -hmm. uh, okay. call me text me email me and think about people that you think I should talk to. Okay. Um, did you also, I'm sure you heard of the rumor that Greg buried her at the Sunoco. <laughs> Under the concrete. Under concrete? Oh, no, I didn't hear that. Really? But, um, that, that would sound like Greg, but... I don't think there was any construction going on in that garage at that time. And mommy was always in that garage out in the front. Okay. His mother. Okay. But he still in the back. It was his office where he did his little drug sales deals. 
What was his demeanor when you went and met him Friday? You said he was nice to you, but... Yeah, he was, but he was, like, um, he didn't, he, he did not show any feelings for someone that had just lost a girlfriend that didn't show up at home, you know, three nights before, you know, she's gone, and you don't bother to notify the police that she didn't come home until the bartender came in at five o'clock and called you to see where Brenda was because her car was there, but she was nowhere to be found. Hmm. Yeah. He just had a very, um, like, I don't give a shit. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good enough. That gives me some stuff to get started. So I appreciate it. Well, it's no problem. I'll definitely uh, talk to him tomorrow, and I don't know when I'll talk okay. to Shauna, but I'll definitely let them know that you're thinking of them and would yeah. like to contact them. Most definitely, yeah. And, I, yeah, because, you know, I wonder how they're doing and how Shauna's two girls are doing, little Brenda, which is 21 now, 22. You know, so she's growing up. Yeah. And Portia would be two years younger, so... You know, these are young women. They're not kid. They're not babies anymore. Yeah, time flies, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it I, does. I know. Well, my thoughts and prayers go out to you, and I'm sorry that you had to go through all of this. Well, I mean, it's a nightmare. It's, it's life. You it, know, you never know what you're going to get tossed. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's still it's sad. It's depressing, and uh, I don't like that people have to suffer and go through that especially missing persons homicides yeah. are, are a little bit different um because you have a body yeah you have a body and you know what happened right to them. and here you yeah. have nothing and it makes it a little harder so uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you yeah well thank you and now, if, if you ever need yeah go ahead can i can i put your phone number into my contact sure. list sure okay all right. That way, then, if I think of something or whatever, I can give you a call. I don't have to go through Facebook and yes, no. send messages that I don't know whether they're... Because I was so surprised last night when I got an answer back. It was a couple hours later. Like, oh, you, you got my message. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't answer my phone much, uh, but mm -hmm. if I see that it's yours, I'll certainly answer it. Okay. Um, and if you need anything, um, don't hesitate to ask. You have a question or okay. anything, just let me know. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, well, thank you very much for everything, and good luck. Hopefully <laughs> you can get to the bottom of everything. The only thing I can promise is is that I'll give it my all. Um, other than right. that, you yeah. know. And I, hey, that's all we can ask of anybody, right. you know? Right, right. So you'll get that from me. And so until next time, okay. I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Iris. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So there I'm done talking to Brenda Condon's sister, Iris. Um, a lot of good information there. Again, uh, that's why victimology is so important. And you notice how I just kept bringing her back to the bar, okay? It's because that, that, that's key. That's key in this investigation. That bar, Carlsbad's Tavern, the demeanor of Carl, Greg, and we're going to get into those suspects, I mean, Right now, I, I hate to label anybody as suspects, okay? You can use different terminology. People say the person of interest. Well, everybody's a person of interest, okay? Carl worked there. Carl knew Brenda. Greg was the boyfriend. And, of course, we have the sketches of three individuals, which I will do a whole episode on on that confusing topic where I think I figured it out to make it less confusing. I think there's a big misconception about those sketches. Now, when I talk, hopefully, to the police officers that were there, uh, that's just as important as talking to Iris about being on the scene. Yes, 
we can label these individuals that know Brenda as suspects or, or not. It doesn't matter what their label is. Okay, that's something the media uses. Well, he's a suspect. He's a person of interest. They are all persons of interest. They're all suspects. Okay? If you want to rank them higher or lower, that's fine. Right now, Carl is somebody I'm very interested in. Because of the information that Iris gave me, that's where I have to follow up on. Remember initially, I'm like, oh, he's not a suspect. No one, you know, th there's no evidence. Well, now I got some red flags. Now I have to follow that up. I got some red flags, obviously, with Greg. I got to follow that up. Now, I know police in the newspaper said that Greg was not a suspect. Okay, well, why? Give me the reasons. Now, I have my own theories as to why he may not be. But I want to know facts as to why he's not. In my mind right now, he is. Now, I've already talked to Carl. But I've talked to Carl as one would talk to any witness. Maybe I threw in a couple questions there that you'll see that are suspect-oriented. That's what you do. Iris gave me a lot of good intel there, bringing her back to the bar. What was the demeanor? What was the feel of the bar? Uh, I got to get in that bar again, okay? And I will. And I will show you that. Hopefully there has not been a lot of reconstruction, remodeling on the inside, that it has the same layout. I did talk to a former member, member, a former worker of Carlsbad's Tavern. Didn't give me a whole lot of information, but gave me some. Gave me a starting point. I still need more. One of the things that really bothered me is she said that she was never talked to by police. That's asinine to me. What do you mean? I said, when did you work there? She said, I started the weekend before Brenda went missing. Well, if you listen closely to Iris, Iris said, Brenda worked the following weekend. She was supposed to only work Mondays and Tuesdays, but she worked on that weekend. This girl says, I, don't, I never even met her, never even saw her. But the police didn't talk to her. That's troublesome. I said, did they talk to any of your co-workers? She said, no. I hope that that's false. Please tell me that that's false. Okay? Please tell me. <laughs> you have to talk to co-workers. You have to. That's paramount. The police did not talk to co-workers. And I'm talking, they need to talk to every single one of them. If you didn't do that, that is such a fail of the justice system for this victim that it makes me want to stand up on the rooftop and scream. I got to get to the bottom of that. Because listen, yes, hindsight's 2020. Mistakes are made. We already established, the police admitted, hey, we didn't, we didn't start on this case for almost a week later, okay? She went missing Tuesday, Saturday, they started taking it serious, but not till like Tuesday or Wednesday did they bring in search teams and do things. Okay, you admitted up to that. She's an adult. She went missing. I, I get that. That's not how I do it, but I get it. And maybe you wouldn't do that today, but in 91, you did that. But if you didn't talk and you didn't interview co-workers in this establishment, um, I, I'll call you out on it. And I got no problem with it. Because that's not how it's done. That's not how it's done in 2024. It's not how it's done in 1954. And it should not be the way it was done in 1991. So please, please come forward and tell me somebody that the police interviewed you as a co-worker. Or, police, please tell me that you did. Please. And not that you went, you did it 20 years later. Please tell me somebody did it in, in March of 1991. Please. 
I'm sure you had to. I, I'm getting frustrated for no reason. I, I'm sure you did that. Police work 101. So, let me move on. A lot of great info from Iris. Now, I want to, I want to shift a little bit. Now, a little bit. But I still want to stick with victimology. So, I need to talk to her kids. I need to talk to her friends. I still got to know more. But in the meantime, while I'm learning more, I need to know more about the bar, Carlsbad's Tavern, the clientele that is there. But I'm going to be piecing a little bit from Carl and Greg. I'll determine whether they're suspects in my book or not. Not anybody else. I don't care what anybody else's opinion is. Oh, he's he's a drug dealer. He's guilty. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Oh, he's a shady business dealer. And he moved to Florida. Well, moved to Florida 10 years later. Doesn't make him a suspect. Okay? But the red flags that I got from this interview from Iris and also um, from what I'm, I read... The interview that I got from Carl, there were some red flags there that made me think, but there was other things that were okay. So it's going to be a long process, folks, but you're going to be along for the ride. I'm all about transparency. So anything that I find, I'm going to let you know because as the public, you deserve that. I was like that when I was on the job as a cop. Yes, there's certain things that you hold back for an investigation so you, you don't get a false confession. I mean, you get a false confession, but you can roll it out because you know certain things. I get that. But who I talk to, what they say, this is 33 years later. The time, to, uh, the time of secrecy is over. Okay? People need answers. Family needs answers. People need to get off their ass and work. Investigate. Okay? Cops got a million different things going on. I got I, I get it. I've been there. I know how cases go cold and they don't resurface until a legitimate tip comes in. Well, let me tell you something right now. I will generate a credible tip from what I'm doing. And it will be relayed. To the police department, face to face. Here you go. May not solve the case, but it'll move the case forward. That's all that we want. Okay? So stick with me. Keep tuning in for each episode. And uh, we'll do this thing together. Because that's how things get done. Teamwork. Togetherness. Transparency. Honesty. Integrity. Character. The backbone of this country, right? So stay tuned to the next edition of Brenda, the Mystery at Carlsbad's Tavern. Until then, Maine's out.